how can you protect 300,000 kids from the danger of the street? How can you expose and hopefully infect 360,000 people with the entrepreneurship virus? To answer this, it's personal and it's very personal. Extremely personal. I have to take you back when I was young, handsome, and with lots of hair. <laughs> My dad, bless his soul, after the words of God, planted the words of Jubran Khalil Jubran. La ta'ish nisf haya. Don't live half a life. This intrigued me shocked me how can possibly somebody lives half a life so i went through the school of life running trying to figure it out adventuring befriending failure and learning from it and taking an interest in people especially those who are achieving and succeeding in their own fields. What are they doing? How they are doing it? And mainly, and the most important one, why they are doing it? Why do they do what they are doing? And this allowed me to start looking inside me and listening to my inner voice. The voices inside me that they talk to me. And also, when Life whispers at me because life whispers at us and talks to us and if we don't listen it starts shouting and then it kicks us. So we need to be noticing all of this and I figured it out that self-worth generates net worth because what is the purpose of net worth if you don't have an internal self-worth and this is where I stumbled over purposeful living to lead a purposeful life to have a meaning for your life and when God tested me and I lost my 17 year old son everything the words of God and my experience everything came in it made sense. I am being tested to do something better. I am being tested, وبشر الصابرين. I'm being tested for something. I was picked to do something. And I did not play dead. I established something called Hikmat Road Safety. My late son's name is Hikmat. I wanted to protect kids and people from street accidents and we have achieved a lot with this but one of them is we had five percent of our schools in Jordan were generating 60 percent of the student injuries in the whole of Jordan 200 and 60 schools out of more than 5,500 schools were generating 60% of the serious injuries, death and, and disability. We've attacked them and we created what we call school zones. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Ameen. Not a single accident happened in these schools in the last six years because of this. And it means that passion combined with science and management theory, it works. It's not only slogans. So this, I am as, all the time I think of this, I try to connect the dots, because innovation about connecting the dots. So I try to connect passion to serve with the pains, the social pains we face, with management theory that I know. I have been trained with
So, as you can tell, I love falafel. <laughs> it's good for you. So, what is falafel? I tried to decode falafel. Falafel has standard sizes. It's quick and simple to make. It has local ingredients, and obviously, I hope it has mass appeal. It's affordable, repeatable process, and a scalable process. I looked at all these ingredients. I said, how can I apply these principles into social change and to impact more people with less? And what we have done, we came up with the falafel theory. Obviously, you have to come up with theory. I'm a consultant. I have to come up with theory. So what we have done, we looked especially the male, the males, the boys, were being hit by cars because they play in the street football. There's no place. What we have done, we create, because I was young, and I was a naughty boy when I was young, as you can tell. We used to play the same thing, but we had a school. We go inside and we play football inside. In Jordan, the Ministry of Education at that time, they used to close the schools because they were worried the boys will destroy the schools after school hours. So we got approval and we created playgrounds for them. This is how it was before and we've created this. At a cost of $300 per playground. So this playground became a community playground serving all the boys and then the girls started going and playing from this simple idea we created 1200 playgrounds in one year at a cost of 300 dollars per ground <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen this is falafel the falafel theory the other thing we wanted we looked at because I, when I was young, at nine years old, uh, ninth grade, I tasted money making when I was selling old stuff in the souk, and I wanted, and I know how it helped me become an entrepreneur, and I wanted our boys and girls to go through that experience. So we have created a company school program that young girls and boys they start a company. And we give them $300 of capital to start a company, a group of 10 boys and girls. They start a company and they go through the experience, through proper training, coaching. And we, we created 650 companies in Jordan. And in 2016, they made half a million dollars of profits. 70% went to their pockets so they can taste money they made, so they raised their spirit and confidence, and 30% they spent it on improving their schools. So we plant at an early stage social responsibility, because I cannot plant it later on at an early stage. So this is 650, and remember, how much they have engaged around the school, the community, their brothers, their fathers. And obviously, 82% from the profits came in from girls' schools. I mean, this is the challenge that... <laughs> because girls in our society, they want to prove themselves. The boy can play all day in the street. Nobody will ask him anything. The girls, they found this as a safe place for them to prove themselves, to create something. And their mothers, they engaged so much in this program. They, they came, they trained them, they were, so this became a community program. In addition, what we have done, the same idea, we looked at Desks around the schools in Jordan, on top of the schools, on the side, broken, and nobody is doing anything. So what we have done, we have 
vocational schools with boys being trained to be carpenters. But it was meaningless for him because he was in a school doing stuff, but he never made money or fixed something. So what we created, we created a program where we pay one dollar for every uh, student who will fix one of the desks. In two months, we finished 11,000 chairs, desks, and by end of 2018, we will complete 128,000 desks, saving the Jordanian government budget by 2.6 million JDs. And this is again the falafel theory. We did not stop here. We wanted our young people to be part of the solution. We wanted them to be involved, engaged, practitioners, solution providers, not only watching and blaming or feeling victimized and that digit age divide between my age and young people. We wanted to create a safe place for the whole family to participate in solving and addressing Jordanian challenges. So what we did, we created listening sessions around all of Jordan, where people came up with national daily challenges they face. Example, hospital appointments. In Jordan, a man will bring his, or a daughter, will, will, she will bring her mother from the south of Jordan to a government hospital in Amman, there is no, there's no appointment. They need to stand in line and possibly she will not see the doctor. This is a challenge we faced and we can solve it with new technologies. So this is one of the issues. So we filtered them into 12 challenges and we created a national TV program where people come with their solutions for these challenges. And guess what? The majority of solutions came in from young people because they wanted to engage. And every show on a Friday it comes, we present three solutions for one challenge, and the winner will get 5,000 JD's gift prize. This is not what is important that we have changed the narrative inside families. Instead of being spectators and complaining, they became engaged in debating. No, I like this idea. What about this? I can do this. And we wanted people to be jealous because they think, ah, oh, this is a stupid idea. I can be better. Okay, join the club. Come up with an idea. So this has changed the narrative in the evening, on a Friday evening, inside average Jordanian home. Based on this falafel theory, I created with a friend of a group of friends a chain called Operation Falafel. People who go to Dubai, please go and eat there. And in Saudi Arabia and inshallah in New York, this is because God, when you have good intentions, will reward you in life. So, the idea is every day we are faced with decisions. Every decision we make, it shapes our story. It shapes who we are. You de can decide to be a tailwind in your plane or headwind. You can decide to be an obstacle into your future or a bridge. It's what you say and what you do matters. You can decide because all the time I tell young people that this is a game of football. It's your choice. You want to be a spectator watching life goes by. You contribute nothing, cheerleader. Or you want to be a referee judging people only. I like this and I like it. This guy is this. Or you decide to be the bull, a victim, and people kicking you around. Because once you decide to be a bull, you have no right to complain. You are a victim. So you sit in the corner and you shut up. Or you decide to be Muhammad Salah, 
الكل بيعرف محمد صلاح You decide to be Muhammad Salah, a player and a good player. Muhammad Salah is an Egyptian player who plays for Liverpool. And all of us, we love Liverpool now. <laughs> and you decide to be Muhammad Salah to be a master of your destiny. It's your choice. It's your choice what you do. So the falafel theory starts with you. I want you to go out from here thinking, I want to create my own falafel theory. I want to create my own theory. I want to think around me, how can I change the world through falafel? This idiot who came to talk us about falafel theory, he's changing the world with falafel. And he's making money out of it, even if in business. So why can't I do the same?